Hello, my name is Frank Santos with Vanco. I'm the Director of Training. And in this session, we're going to have Randy Blanchard, our audio director, cover 70 volt audio, some of the uh, frequently asked questions that we get. So, with that, I will turn it over to Randy. Randy, go ahead. Thank you, Frank. So, what we're going to talk about today is 70 volt audio. Uh, we're going to give you enough information. Uh, to get you started, this is by no means a deep dive. Uh, this is going to be very high level. Uh, but when you're doing 70 volt, it's really just a lot of formulas and a lot of rules. Uh, as you learn those, uh, it'll become more intuitive, easy for you to do. Um, so let's get started. So we talk about 70 volt audio. You'll also hear it uh, referred to as constant voltage systems, high impedance audio systems, uh, but most commonly referred to in the US and Canada as 70 volt audio. Uh, a couple rules, a couple things. Uh, it's almost always a mono system. The goal of a 70 volt system is typically music coverage as opposed to stereo separation, imaging details, things like that. Uh, it's all about good music coverage. Uh, one of the really nice features is it allows us to use one amplifier or less amplifier to cover a very large area where in a residential system, typically we're using a speaker per zone, or I'm sorry, an amplifier per zone, and we're using multiple amplifiers. Uh, another nice difference kind of between the two is that the volume level or maximum volume level is controlled by the speaker and not the amplifier. We have taps on the speaker that allow that. Uh, we'll cover that in a bit as well, but if you notice the diagram, uh, you'll see the 70 volt system, one wire run, as opposed to multiple wire runs for a residential system. So some of the advantages of a 70 volt or commercial over a residential uh, allows us to use more speakers uh, to run the speaker wire longer distances. We can go out over a thousand feet. Uh, on a 70 volt system, where in a residential system, yeah, typically limited to 100, 150 feet. Uh, so more speakers, longer runs, less amplifiers. Um, when do we use these? Well, we use them for playing background music. We use them for public address. Uh, we use them, unfortunately, nowadays, more commonly, mass notification system, uh, active shooter uh, drills, things of that nature. Of course, in large environments where a lot of speakers are needed is when you're gonna typically use the 70 volt system. All right, well, we talk 70 volt today. We're gonna talk ceiling speakers. That's the majority of what you use in a 70 volt system. So we're, we're gonna focus strictly on ceiling speakers today. Um, why do we wanna use ceiling speakers? Well, again, talking earlier, lots of area to cover. We wanna to try to do it with as few speakers, as little power as possible. Uh, the other reason you wanna go up in the ceiling is you don't have obstructions to deal with. I don't have cubicles, walls, things like that to deal with, furniture. Uh, so again, lots of area, as few speakers, as little power as possible. So when we put in the speakers, when we decide where we're gonna put in the speakers, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, it's all about formulas. So here's the first formula. Uh, when you're installing a ceiling speaker, you wanna space the speakers out two times the height of the ceiling. Ceiling's eight foot, you want the speakers 16 feet apart. 10 feet, you want them 20 feet apart. This is gonna give you good, even coverage. Um, where do you put the speakers? Well, you start in the corner of the room and you work your way out. That first speaker, you don't wanna do two times, you wanna do one time with ceiling height. So eight feet out, eight feet out, then 16 feet away from that. You can see the drawing on the right shows you a typical layout um, based on an eight foot or based on any ceiling height. Uh, now, don't sweat it if you can't get it perfect, if there's a light fixture in the way, if there's a sprinkler head in the way. Just get close. The speaker's got good dispersion. You're still going to get good coverage, even if it's not perfect. Next formula you got to learn is how do I decide how many speakers I need in a room? Well, again, 
there's a formula. So we're going to start with the square footage of the room with length times width. Then we want to take the ceiling height. We want to multiply it by two. Then we want to square that number. So then we're going to take our square footage. We're going to divide it by that ceiling height number, round it up. And that's the total number of speakers you're going to use in that room, that environment, that space. So simple formula. This is going to tell you how many speakers I need to help you on your quoting. So we know how many speakers we need. Let's talk about how we're going to wire. We talked earlier about wiring them. Uh, speakers are always wired in parallel. We don't wire in series on a commercial application. Um, we can, if you look on the right side, we can literally go out all the way to the end if we want. Uh, don't recommend this. Yes, you can do it. If, it, if you're doing four speakers in a system, that's fine. In six speakers, that's fine. But when you start doing multiple speakers, what you really want to do is run lines. Like if you look on the left hand side, you can see how we do it. Everything is run in parallel, but we're bringing three different lines back to the system. Uh, why you want to do this is the power loss at the last speaker is going to be reduced, so it's going to have more power at the end. Uh, if we have issues, if a speaker goes bad or a line goes bad, it's easier to troubleshoot. The chances of losing the entire system is reduced. Uh, so try to divide your speakers up. Everything is run in parallel, but try to do it like you see it on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, we've talked about uh, speakers. We talked about how to wire them. Next two steps, taps. So we're coming next towards the end here uh, because it's pretty simple. So it's the taps. We talked earlier, the volume of the speakers controlled at the speaker is addition to, in addition to the head end and the volume control. Um, so we want to set a tap. How loud do we want a speaker? How do we want the speaker to be? And how loud in relation to the other speakers? So the first thing we got to do is figure out what the ambient noise level of that room is. Now, the best thing to do is to measure it. You can download uh, SPL meter apps uh, for Android or, Android or iOS, or you can go out and buy a nice SPL meter. They're not terribly expensive and they're going to be more accurate. I encourage you to go to the location during its business hours. If it's a restaurant, go in the evening, go at lunchtime too. Uh, if it's an office, go when the office is busy, walk around and measure the noise level. And that's going to give you an idea of what the average ambient noise level. If it's really loud in there, we got to get more power to the speakers. However, if it's really quiet in there, we don't need as much power, so we can use less amplifier. Uh, on the right-hand side is uh, the settings for our Beale Street speakers. Now, in the middle of the screen, we give you the, the bottom picture is a 70 volt tap, typical 70 volt tap. Uh, you'll see these on our Beale Basic speakers. You'll see these on most of our competitor speakers. On the top is Beale Street Sonic Vortex, the taps. We actually give you a dial, easier to use, easier to set up. You wire the speakers in, you set the dial for the way you need it, and off you go. Um, so we've decided, let's, in our case, let's say we've decided to tap our speakers at five watts. Now, this is going to be experience. You're going to learn more. As you do more, you'll be able to set your taps better. Uh, but it's going to take some trial and error. So let's, for the sake of uh, argument, we're doing 10 speakers and we're setting them all at five watts. So how do we figure out our amplifier? Well, we take all of our speakers, 10, we multiply it by our tap, five, that gives us 50. Now what we want to do is add another 20% to that because we want to give the amplifier some headroom. We don't want to push the amplifier all the way to its limit. We want to give it some room at the top for a little extra oomph when we need that. So let's add 20%. So 50, 20%, 10, 10 watts more. We want to use a 60 watt amplifier. You can use more, but you don't want to use less. So you want to choose the amplifier based on the speakers, based on the wattage. Uh, again, we started at the speakers and we worked our way to the amplifier. Now, the next thing, of course, should be common, should be common sense, but sometimes it's not. We need to know what the customer is connecting. 
What are their sources? What are they going to be doing? We got to make sure we got enough inputs. Um, if they want a microphone, we better make sure that the amplifier has a mic input. Or in the case of our Beale Street amplifiers, we don't offer you a mic uh, preamp in, inside, but we do offer a, a, a external microphone preamp that you would connect in. Uh, so again, make sure you know what they're connecting, digital, analog, microphones, and then choose the amplifier based on that. That's it. You've really built a 70 volt system. Um, now, a couple things to help get you started. I'm not going to read through this. You're going to get this presentation. Uh, you can download this presentation if you're taking it off of our LMS. Um, but here are some basic questions to ask your customer to help you build that system for them. Uh, make sure you use these and you'll get your own down the road. Remember, you can never ask too many questions. Keep asking questions until they stop giving you answers. Um, now you know enough to begin selling 70 volt systems. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Frank Santos. Sounds good, Randy. We appreciate the, the overview on 70 volt audio and covering a lot of the frequently asked questions that we get regarding 70 volt. For any additional questions on this or even the 70 volt solutions that we have to offer within the Beale Street and Pulse Audio lines, give us a call, shoot us an email, uh, feel free to contact us. Hope this was beneficial. Thank you for your time.